William, check out this geranium. Oh, Judy, that's not the only thing growing. We're growing to an hour-long show, and we'll tell you more next on Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time and welcome to the first hour-long show of the season. We're at Bauman's Farm and Garden and we are checking out these pillar geraniums. Later in the show we'll be talking to Brian and telling you how you can get your hands on one. Also today we will educate you about spring chickens. We'll also be telling you about moon gardening. But coming up first, House Plants 101. So do you have an urban jungle in your home or would you want one? You have to come to Portland Nursery on Division because this is just an amazing place. I'm with Sean today and Hello. he's going to give us kind of like a Houseplants 101 to sure. kind of help us really have that beautiful space like this right in our own home. Yeah, I'm more than happy to do that. So what do you think is maybe the most important thing when we're looking for plants um, that somebody should be paying attention? The number one things that people need to think about is the amount of light and the proper watering technique that they can provide in their home. Um, lighting being the first thing I think people need to think about. It's really simple, like at a garden center, to just call it a low light plant or call it a bright light plant. Right. And it's easy to sell it that way. But the truth is, even low light plants indoors, that is, prefer bright light. Okay. They just don't want uh, hot, direct sun. Um, your low light plants are tolerant of low light, but will still thin out. Okay. Whereas your bright light plants really need that nice window okay. in order to thrive. So give us some suggestions. So I have a really beautiful window. I want to put something right in the window. What mm -hmm. would you suggest? Yeah, we have on the end of here a couple of uh, bright light plants. Any form of ficus, which is what's this classic, you know, been around for generations. Uh, any form of ficus likes bright light. They can be a little finicky. We also brought a, a tea plant over. Those are um, and I brought this mainly because most of your plants with brightly colored leaves need more light than their green counterparts. Oh, that is good. Yeah. And then what about like a medium light? So maybe mm -hmm. I'm in my living room, I have an end table, so maybe something that would take a little bit less light. Yeah, yeah, a little further over, your dracaenas, which is like this, and also the dragon tree and uh, corn plant are examples of dracaenas. Also the dumb cane, some people call them low light plants, some people medium. I personally find that low and medium light is kind of a gray area. Sure. The simple fact is that it'll stay fuller in medium to semi-bright, um, but most of them will tolerate low light. They just slowly thin over time. And then what about this little palm? Yeah, palms um, Palms are a totally different look. Palms and ferns give you a softer look. Sure. Um, and are kind of low light tolerant. I don't know, most palms like bright light, but they live in lower light. Right. Yeah. And then, so I really have this dark space. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no natural light. It's going to be fluorescent or whatever. So what do you suggest for that? Yeah, for pretty dark, um, your best plant to go through is the snake plant, which we have one of these here, the mm -hmm. white version. And actually, the dark green ones handle the low light even better than this white one we brought over. Um, that's probably the best choice for a really dark spot. If I'm totally honest, I like to recommend that people provide their plants with some natural light. Oh, and that's an idea, sure. Maybe you put like a little light on it. Oh, yes. Sorry, I, um, I was thinking windows, but oh, grow lights sure. actually do supplement just fine. Oh, excellent. Yeah. And so then the next tip is watering. So I know that is really kind of people are like, oh, I just kill my plants all the time. And usually we love them too much and we're watering them all the time. Yes, it's <laughs> more common with house plants this is. More common for people to overwater than underwater. Um, and that means water before it needs it. Right, right. So your average house plant um, really wants to get so the soil surface seems dry, as well as maybe the top half of the soil ball is fully dry. And that means sticking your finger in sure. and testing the soil on a regular basis. Um, wait till it's partly to mostly dry before you water. And so what about like having water in the dish? Is that a good thing or a no, bad thing? No, okay. not at all. Um, we have the dishes to protect our tables, not to serve the plant. Okay. Um, the dish is, uh, if you ever water so much you have water in the dish for more than a couple few minutes, you know, it doesn't soak back up, mm -hmm. you want to dump it in the sink. Okay. Um, and then with something like cacti or the snake plant we mentioned, any sort of succulent, you want them to get fully dry between waterings. Ah, that okay. is a really good tip. And so would we want to put like say every Monday I'm going to water or is it a better to really always be checking? A lot of people do that system, you know, the time-based scheduling, 
And yeah, some plants might adapt to a once a week or a once every other week, depending on your circumstances. But I really like to encourage people to get in touch with their plants. <laughs> sure. It only takes two seconds when you're walking by right. and you stick your finger in there and see how dry it is today. Right. Um, and that way, if you're checking them every other day or something, over time, you'll get a sense for how often it really is. Right, you can get to your own schedule. Yeah. And then maybe it does change. We have to really think about seasons, because seasons just don't happen outside. They happen inside, That's too. That's right. The amount of light, if nothing else. Also, how often we're using our furnaces. Right. Um, or air conditioner, I suppose. Sure. Um, can really alter the watering schedule. Uh, and then what about putting our plants out for the summertime? We want them to get a little bit more light, maybe a little bit more air circulation. Some plants like that, some plants don't. A lot of the low light plants, if you put them out in direct sun, all of a sudden in June, they're gonna burn yeah. and they're not better off for it. Whereas a lot of your really bright light stuff, the ficus being a classic example, Ficus naturally grow in full sun. Right. And so they are more than happy to get that extra light. Uh -huh. And then also insects, we should be, if we're checking them all the time, we're really looking for insects too. Yeah, ideally you never bring them into your home, but <laughs> that's just not the reality for right. all of us. So when you are checking for water, sometimes it's a good idea to just have a quick inspect on the bottoms sure. of the leaves or down here in the new growth. Make sure there's no unusual symptoms showing up. Uh, if there are, come to Portland Nursery, give us a call, we'll, we'll walk you through. Um, you know, ways to fix it, whether it's um, uh, organic spray like neem oil or um, or even just removal of the pest in some cases. Right, right, just washing it off. Right, sometimes that's all it's needed. Yeah. And then we need to talk about repotting. Should we ever repot a plant? Yes, of course we ever have to. Um, but you should usually have a reason to repot. So it's drying out too fast, it's so big it's not standing up in the pot well. Um, or it's gotten to the point where it'll grow a leaf but lose a leaf, grow a leaf, lose a leaf mm -hmm. because it's just too much foliage for the amount of roots. Oh, sure. um, you shouldn't do it just because you want to show love to your plant. <laughs> and that same, true, same is true of watering, by right, the way. Right. You don't water just to show love. Anyway, as far as the repotting goes, when you do, you usually just go up in one size. So that might be a pot two inches bigger in diameter. You never take a little plant and put it in a big pot, especially with house plants. It's one thing outside with your petunias but um, houseplants just don't grow that fast and to fill it in. Uh, yeah. Well, Sean is just a wealth of information here Thank and you. all <laughs> of the staff here at Portland Nursery on Stark Street and Division. Division Street looks like a botanic <laughs> garden. You have to come out here. Stark Street has a wonderful selection too. So really, if you're looking to add houseplants to your place, please come out to Portland Nursery. If you need any information about where they are, go to gardentime.tv. We'll click over their website. Sean, thanks so much. You've really helped Thank us you, all so much. Much appreciated. Since 1982, The Wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, The Wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. Since 1926, the Bonite Company has worked with homeowners to make their homes and gardens beautiful. If you have a garden problem, Bonide has the answer. Don't lose the battle with weeds. The Bonide line of weed beater products will help you get a handle on your weed problems. They are active in cool weather and you'll see visible results in less than 24 hours. Visit Bonide.com to find a local retailer and to download your free Bonide Problem Solver app for your iPhone or Droid. Well, it is not spring until you come to the Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival here in Woodburn. I'm with Barb, and Barb, 
It's so wonderful to come. You know, 14 years ago, this was our first story for that's, our Garden uh, you Time. You told me that this morning. That was that's fantastic. You know, that's so great. thank you so much. Well, and great 14 years. Thank you. And it's so great to come again. I mean, every year we come, and it's beautiful. It's cold, but you know, it's it's Oregon. You know, we've had we, February was brutal. I think it was oh. the longest month of the year, oh. and um, it just it held the flowers back. I mean, the tulips just looked like they didn't move for a month. And then last week we got that warm weather, and they just you'd almost watch them grow out there. Excellent. And now we have strips of color, and okay. they're they're coming. They're hey. changing fast. That is good. But you, so you can come out. There is color in the fields, but there's so much more to do here. Oh, there really is. You know, you you come out and bring the family, and you can, you know, it's only five dollars a person getting in. Mm -hmm. Maximum twelve. Uh, you know, uh, twenty dollars per car, and and twelve and under is free. But once you get in, oh. you know, if you bring a picnic lunch, you oh. come. We have picnic tables, but wander around and explore. You know, we have lots of what I call soft touches. You know, the big giant wooden shoes or the cutouts. Uh -huh. You know, and fun things for the kids to do, even mud puddles. <laughs> That is great. So many photo ops, and we all love to bring our cameras and our just our cell phones, and so there's photo ops everywhere. Everywhere. You know, we, we, we design the field that way. We design everything for those perfect photo ops. Yeah. And then there's special things happening during all of this festival. So what are the, some of the highlights? Well, we have like bottles of bodega where they come in and they paint. Oh. Um, that's, that's a fun activity. That's usually in the evenings. Um, other ones, you know, of course, the Easter egg hunt that we have at Easter, fun, yeah. uh, Easter sunrise service. Um, every day, though, we have, well, on weekends, we have wood shoemaker, we have the steam tractors running, you know, we have lots of kids' activities. I mean, there's there's fun. the ducky races and the sand tables and, oh. and just, you know, lots of lots of room for the kids to run and play. That is nice. And I think the most important thing is, is that we can order bulbs to pick up later yes. in the season. Yep, That's yep. the best part. Well, we have display, display beds out there and you, our catalog, you just, you can pull out our catalog and then walk through the display beds and look at actually how tall they are, the bloom oh, nice. times, things like that. So you can you can pick out that perfect mix and then you can order them and pick them up in September or we'll ship them to you. So Barb, about how many different kind of varieties are in your catalog? Well, we have about a hundred, just over a hundred varieties in our catalog, but we have other things as well. So we have hyacinths and crocus oh. and, you know, spring flowering bulbs. So you can, you can make a great spring collection in your garden. And then I like to always bring some home because you have them that are already forced. They're in pots. It's ready to go and I can just pop them in my garden. Right, right. We've got the potted tulips available now. We'll have cut flowers available next week. We haven't started picking yet. So and then how do we come. find out all this information? Oh, our website's probably the best place, you know, okay. woodenshoe.com. Just go there and you can look at all our activities. Um, it, also, we have a field report, so you can see, get oh, an updated nice. status of what our bloom is actually is. And we kind of say, okay, now's the time to come, the best bloom, we'll let people know. But, you know, if it's a beautiful day and you want to just come out and stre you know, stretch your legs, Aww. you can check and, and come on out anyway. Uh, you can also follow us on Facebook and, and uh, Instagram. We keep those updated as well as far as boom time. And so many beautiful pictures. She's an unbelievable photographer. So to see your pictures <laughs> you. and everybody else's pictures, that's a great idea too. Yeah, thank you. Well, you have to come. I think everybody comes every year because it's the first big thing of spring. So go to gardentime.tv and we'll click it over to their website and you can find out the field report, what's going on. But really, get in the car and come out. Thanks so much. Happy spring. Happy spring. Well, it's a great delight to be out here at Blooming Advantage, and I'm with Grace Dinsdale. And Grace, you know, I've, I've often bought so many of the plants and sold so many of the plants from you all. Well, thank and you. And we wanted to figure out, because we know the process, but we wanted to figure out what is the process of how you get such amazing, wonderful plants. Sure. Well, it starts with cultivar selection, of course. You've right. got to choose the best varieties that are available or that you have collected in order to have a good plant that's going to perform well in the garden. And that's always been one of the uh, main um, factors that we consider when we choose plants, is plants that work well here in our drought, droughty summer environment that work well in the Pacific Northwest. That's definitely part of how we choose the cultivars that we offer. And then once you get those cultivars growing, what is the, what is the process? How do you harden them up for our environment? Well, of course, we don't want to start too soon with the hardening up. At the, in the beginning, we give them a very nice beginning. We uh, give them heat and fertilizer right. and protection from the elements. We want them to get off to the healthiest start that we can, stress-free. Right. So w once our plants are started, we, we usually root cuttings. Most things are grown vegetatively. Um, some things are from seed, depending on whether we can get a reliable, uniform plant from seed or not. Right. So as soon as that plant is ready to go and without any serious stress in its early life, 
we'll go ahead and transplant up in our transplant line, which is in the barn. And then we bring those plants out and we have a few greenhouses like this with bottom heat. So these plants have a very sheltered life in here. They've got bottom heat, they're flood irrigated, they've got a nice ambient temperature, they've got natural ventilation. When it gets hot, the roofs will open, they've, we've got a shade system. So these plants are getting the best of the best. Above what they need. That's right. And then as soon as they're really pushing roots and they're starting to take hold and grow actively, we make things harder for them. Okay, and yes. <laughs> so I suggest that we're going to take a little break and go to a different place That's and talk right. more about yes. how you do that process. That's right, yes. Okay, I have to say, Grace, that <laughs> this is where you're putting plants now as you're, as you're getting them more acclimated. Mm -hmm. But it's much colder out here to me. Oh, so yes. So explain that process. Yeah. So when we, when we have an actively growing plant and we move it outside, it does change everything about the way it grows really? from, uh, from the time it, it comes outside. So inside, with that warmer temperature, the tops are growing more. The roots are growing, but not like the tops. We bring it out, and the tops kind of stop for a little bit. And the roots start really growing wow. in those colder temperatures. So um, the, the cells in the leaf also change composition, and they become denser, have less water in them. And uh, so we get a really good leaf substance that's more resistant, more resilient to weather extremes. So this isn't just a theory. There's actually some science behind why y'all do this. Oh, yeah. And then I was wondering too, what kind of a soil, is, are you big fans of fertilizing? What is your concept for, for that kind of stuff for soil? Well, we, we like to use compost in our soil and we do in all of our soils. Nice. Uh, we also use slow release fertilizer. We, we like to have the fertilizer last through the time that the plant is on the bench at the retailer oh, so oh. that when it's still got a charge, once you take it home and plant it in the, in the garden. And I have to, I mean, being out here, it seems like, I don't know how many acres it are. It seems like there's a lot though, and there's so many plants. How many varieties do you all, do you all uh, grow? Well, we grow, it, it changes every year and I don't really count them, but it's always in excess of 2,000 wow. and, and it's less than 3,000. So it's somewhere in that range depending on the year. That's absolutely yeah. amazing. And Go ahead. Another thing that I forgot to mention about the soil that we do is we try to establish a soil web of, of microorganisms right. and things. So we use compost tea, we have mycorrhiza in there. Um, we're, we're really trying to create a natural environment that's going to also help the plant withstand uh, pest Pressure. And that, that's what the soil web is, is that whole connectivity of everything that's going on within it to help the plant thrive. That's right, yeah. Well, you know, for over 20 years now, I have not only bought, but I've also sold a lot of Blooming Advantage plants. And I have to tell you, they are wonderful. And it's always fascinating to find out exactly how they grow them so well. So if you're interested, go to uh, get, I'm sure they can go to your website and find out who sells the that's plants, right? That's right, yeah, and the Blooming Nursery. And, and also there's a plant finder bloomingadvantage.com site and that has a list of the retailers that, that carry our plants. Amazing. So there you have it. If you want a great plant and you know that it's grown very well for your garden, just uh, pick up one of the Blooming Advantage plants. Grace, it's always a delight. Thank you, my friend. Oh, thank you, William. Your garden begins here with the people in purple. The ones you meet inside each Owl's Garden and Home store, and the ones you don't meet here on our local farm, we all work together to bring you an exceptional experience. Whether you need a single plant or a whole yard, no matter if you know plants or not, we're here when you're ready to start. Come see us, the people in purple. The best gardens begin and continue to grow at Owl's Garden and Home in Woodburn, Sherwood, Gresham, and now in Wilsonville. Your garden is only as good as the ingredients you use. That's where Black Gold can help. Black Gold Seedling Mix is formulated for successful seed germination and strong seedling growth. Black Gold Seedling Mix is organic and OMRI listed, so you can start this year's organic garden outright. Look for Black Gold at your local garden center or go online to blackgold.bz. Black Gold, all the riches of the earth. Come to the 17th annual Garden Palooza April 6th at Fur Point Farms. See over 40 plant growers and garden vendors. Free parking and free admission. Stop by and enter to win a garden arbor from Garden Gallery Ironworks. Garden Palooza April 6th at Fur Point Farms in Aurora. 
Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terra Casa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terra Casa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terra Casa. Terra Casa in downtown Damascus. So we were out here at Bauman Farms, and you know, I was looking for Brian because I had just gone in to buy my sugar-free Marionberry pie, and I thought, well, I gotta find Brian. So I came out, wandered around the greenhouses, and here you are out in a greenhouse. What are we doing with all these beautiful geraniums? I'm getting ready for Garden Palooza. <laughs> I know. I um, a couple of years ago, I went to Europe for the summer. Uh -huh. Well, not for the entire summer. Mom <laughs> let me out of here for like a long weekend, and I was shocked by these towers of geraniums. Yeah. And I thought. Well, where did these come from? And um, come to find out, it's a series of geraniums called pillar geraniums. And the ones behind us here are ones that I've been working on for about two years since I went. Wow. And um, you can see they're like stunning, five they're feet really tall cool. now. Yeah. So I, they're looking great. I wanted to bring them out to Garden Palooza, and we'll have starts of them available for people to try as well at home. Oh wow, that is such a cool idea. So you have this and then some other stuff you're bringing. Tell uh, me, oh, that's stunning. This is a uh, primrose. It's not brand new, but it's pretty hard to get a hold of. It's one called Blue Zebra, and um, they're just starting to open just in time for Garden Palooza. Wonderful. Another hard to find one. This is actually one of my favorites. Um, I had it in my garden, and I was talking with Judy earlier. She had it in her house as well. Both of ours survived the winter this last oh, year. Oh wow. And it gets huge. It's beautiful. That's the one that the leaves get really, really big too. Really big. Stunning. Angel wings is yes. what they call it. Absolutely yep. beautiful. This is a brand new type of Cinetti or Cineraria. It's called Ruby. What a beautiful color. color. Again, they're just opening just in time for Garden Palooza. And that's what we don't, we're all excited about that happening. So we're yep. thrilled that you're going to be out there again. I'm this year. So we're happy with that. But you've also got something else coming up. Today is the last day of our open house at the farm. Wow. So we have three classes today going on at 10, 11, and noon. Um, Bailey's Nursery is here talking about their Lovely. first edition, their brand new plants. We have Carla from Espoma oh, nice. um, talking about how to fertilize your berries and fruit trees. And then at noon, we have Kurt from Heinz talking about growing citrus. But Brian, this isn't just about some really great information right. and education. What do you get if you go to all three or even one of the classes? Every class you go, you get a 10% off coupon. Wow. Um, and then every class you go, you can combine each 10% off coupon so you can use them 30% off if you want. Or you can still use them for 10% off any Three one different plants, wow. absolutely. And then garden soils on, a sluggo for $5. Um, is, it, it, is, it, is it like in a cup? No, no, <laughs> two and a half pounds, wow. yeah, $5, it's wow. a great deal. Um, but you can go to our website at bowenfarms.com and check out all the specials today. Today is the last day, so make sure you come out today. So for sure, you know, don't forget Garden Palooza, but then mm -hmm. certainly come on out today to Bowman Farms and get some smart thinking going on. Plus, you'll get a discount for that. All of the wonderful things you always find out here are still available. Thank you so much, Brian. Good to see you, buddy. You too. Well, spring is all about hanging baskets, and I think one of the most favorite one is fuchsias. And I'm with Patty, and I'm at the Fred Meyer in Raleigh Hills. And Patty, I think that everyone loves fuchsia baskets. So it's a I Northwest think, favorite for yeah, sure. That yeah, that is great. Yes, yeah. it is good to know. And so you have so many different kind of fuchsias here, mm -hmm. and you have something coming up. So we're going to show everyone how to plant a fuchsia basket. But while we're doing that, tell us about what's going on. Right. So um, we're super excited that you're here to see us today. Um, we're coming up to our big event. It's our 29th. Um, annual fuchsia event and so we're going to talk a little bit about our event but we have um, red spider fuchsias we're going to plant today um, into um, one of our um, cocoa liner um, wire baskets and what we always recommend is five to seven fuchsias in a hanging basket and it's great to start with the centerpiece so we'll just kind of walk through here sure um, so this is heliochrysum silver threads and we really like this one the silver foliage is so popular right now mm -hmm. it's very um, very popular and this is a, a cool heliochrysum because it spreads through the plant as it's growing so it kind of intertwines with everything so it's a lot of, it's a really fun one so we like to have a centerpiece and then why so many plants in a pot 
Well, it takes a long time for fuchsias to bloom. When we have, um, our big fuchsias would normally have like four plants in them, but it takes a long time. So I'm not very patient. I, ah, like to, uh, you want it I want to get something ready to enjoy for most of the season. Well, there you go. Okay. And that's really a great tip. And so during the event, you'll be telling people all these wonderful tips. We actually, we will, and we'll be planting. So our customers our customers can come in and see us. Um, the information is on our website at fredmeyer.com. But actually, you can come into our Fred Meyer store, and we have um, our associates will plant for you. You can bring in a plant from or pot from home, or we have planters here to buy. Oh, that's a great idea. And then buying fuchsias or anything. It's actually called Fuchsia Saturday, but you can we will plant any kind of plant you buy. And um, it was a really super fun day. Our customers have been coming here for a long time to come and see us. It is a great idea. And I love that you make the mess here. I don't have to make the mess at home. <laughs> it's all ready to go when you get home. You can just. Uh, just be ready to enjoy your patio. We like to put a couple tags inside so you don't forget which uh, fuchsia you got this year. We have about 20 varieties in our stores and then that will help you remember what you want to plant in the future and keep, you know, and you know what I love too about Fred Meyer is that you have all local growers. And so we know that the plants are gonna do well for us in the areas that your stores are. We are so lucky to have our local growers. Um, they are you know, right in our area and they um, are coming in our stores every day. They help our stores um, training them on plant material and getting um, great fresh product in every day. And then what about the aftercare? So now we're gonna be planting this and so we want it to look beautiful for the rest of the season right. through the summer. So what do right. we take, how do we take care? So, at our, so first off at our event we use um, really high quality black gold which oh, already perfect. has some fertilizer in it okay. um, and the plants have some fertilizer to start with um, so you can put a slow release in here or at least use water soluble um, as you are watering your plant. Um, the fuchsias do like a little bit of morning sun they'll kind of bloom better and mm -hmm. definitely afternoon shade so patios and porches are a great place for them to hang out. Yeah. That is great yeah. and then how about watering especially when we get into the heat? Right if it's windy or as it gets warmer fuchsias do need a little bit of water you know more more so so it could be every day if we get into a hot summer. For sure. ah, that yeah. is true. Yeah. Well, you know, did you see how easy that was? We just really did on real time. It doesn't take that long. And you can come out to Fred Meyer during the event and have someone help you. They'll even help you plan it. They'll pick all the plants that will do right for you. So go to fredmeyer.com and get all the information, or you can go to gardentime.tv. Thanks, Patty. Have a okay. great event. Thanks for coming to see us. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. As an Oregonian, seeking adventure isn't just a luxury. For me, it's a priority. So I need a car that can handle the unpredictable and a dealership I can depend on to go the extra mile. There's really only one place that gets it right every time. With Capital Subaru on my side, I have miles of memories to look forward to. Spring into action and lease the new 2019 Subaru Impreza 2.0i, just $198 per month, now during the Subaru A Lot to Love event at Capital. Over the 30 years that our family has been in the nursery industry, we've learned that anyone can supply a customer with plants and garden supplies. But it's supplying those plants and supplies backed by a knowledgeable staff that can transform a garden and take it from ordinary to extraordinary. That's what we do at Sagawa Nursery. Why be ordinary when you can be extraordinary? Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. For over 100 years, Collier Arborcare and Bartlett Tree Experts have provided tree and shrub care services to the Portland metropolitan area. From large tree and small shrub pruning, tree removal and stump grinding, we can handle all your tree care needs. Our arborists diagnose and treat your toughest insect and disease problems. We also have organic solutions for growing and maintaining healthy gardens, as well as organic nutrition for your trees and shrubs. Collier and Bartlett, environmentally friendly since 1907. Come to the 17th Annual Garden Palooza April 6th at Fur Point Farms. See over 40 plant growers and garden vendors. Free parking and free admission. Stop by and enter to win a garden arbor from Garden Gallery Ironworks. Garden Palooza April 6th at Fur Point Farms in Aurora. I am here with Don Sprague, who we affectionately call the Mole Man. Now let me tell you right up front. This is going to be a story about how to rid your yard of moles. So it, it's not a deterrent story, so we just want to warn you up front that we're going to tell you how to really just completely rid your yard of these things. And what's the first step in doing that? 
The first step uh, is, uh, William, is to find find out what you got and make sure you got moles or you got gophers. And how do you tell that difference? The mole will have a perfect little mound, kind of like this one, and the gophers are a little more scattered out, and so they'll be a little lower profile. Okay. And there'll be more of them. The mole hills, you'll just have a few mounds here, maybe up to 10 or 15 in your yard, but that don't mean that you got 15 moles. That yeah. just means you got one. Okay. And he's just active. So it'll look like you might have a huge family of them, but really probably just yeah. about one or two per yard yeah. is all you're yes. going to get. And so what you want to do is, is pick out a mound of dirt. It's kind of like that one right here. Mm -hmm. and, then, uh, there were, and then and I just moved this one away from here. Uh -huh. And so we'll just dig down. And, and if you just kind of dig around the outside circle of that, that's about how big you're going to have to dig the hole. Okay. And so, you've already, I see that it looks like you've already done that. Yeah, I just, I just uh, marked this one here with a shovel. So you want me to go ahead and take yeah, it out? Yeah, let's, let's see what you got there. Okay. So basically, you just take and lift this piece of dirt right out of here. Oh. And, and set it aside, see, and then that way. I see the tunnel. Ah, right, there you go. <laughs> you know, and then I'm going to recommend that, that, that you wear gloves when you're working with a mole trap so that you don't cut your hand or. Because they are made out of metal. They are made out of metal, and they got sharp edges on them. And then take something like this little weed eater right here. Uh -huh. It's a little simple tool, and you can just get down in here and see, and this tunnel is right here. Oh, so. wow, yep. Yeah, and then the other one is right there. So and that'll go to that mound over there, and this one goes to a mound back over there. And that it, they're not necessarily always going to be straightly in front of each other. They can be at angles too, right? Right. Yeah, they could come in this way or they could come in here. Okay. Sometimes they're straight across. Uh, but however you find them, you just want to make sure they're nice and clean. And then, and, then, and then you just take your trap, the cinch trap, of course, uh -huh. made for over 100 years, made in the USA. We're kind of proud of that. So this is a trap here, and, uh, and it's available at most farm and garden stores. So what we want to do is set this, and, you, and uh, the traps all come with instructions. So uh -huh. this, this part here comes across, and then these little levers come down. So you just set the trap. And like you're so. making it look really easy. Oh, it is really okay. easy. And then, and just like that, and I'll see that's a set trap. And hold it by the back. Always hold it by the back, because see, no matter what happens here, that's kind of your safety on yeah. the trap. Yeah. Because if that flips over and your thumbs up yes. there, it's so. And that's why we like to encourage you to wear gloves, because if you hold a trap here and this comes across, it's going to hurt your yeah. hand. And it won't break your hand or anything, but it will hurt. But you'll definitely know you've been trapped. <laughs> you've been trapped. So just take the trap like that, and then holding it from the backside, and you just push it into the hole. Okay, that's and then, pretty easy. Uh, and then see, and then pull it back a couple times, make sure it's nice and clean. Uh -huh. And then we like to put a little dirt underneath the bottom of it just to elevate the back. So basically when you're looking at your trap, you know, instead of sitting like this, it'll be, the back will be elevated just ever so slightly. Okay. And it makes it easier for the mole to go through the jaws and bump the trigger. So, and that's really all they have to do, isn't it? That's all they have to do. And then leave everything open. And then the other trap, you just put it in the other direction the same way. Now, when you say leave everything open, you don't you don't want to cover this. You don't put the soil in. Leave no. the, the hole like it is. Just leave it totally open. Now, if you have a problem with dogs or cats or kids and you want to put something over the top of it, you're welcome to do that. Just don't cut off the air. Because they that's how they know that it's an active right. hole is they still get that yep. oxygen going through that. See, he'll come back into the system and he'll feel this air movement that we've created here. And he'll come right to that opening. Curiosity killed the mole, maybe. That's it. <laughs> so That's if, it. We're, if people want to, uh, to find out more about this, where, do they, where can they find out where the traps are sold at? Uh, you can call our 800 number, which I'm sure you will put on the screen. And, then, uh, or, and it's at most farm and garden stores. Okay. And Wonderful. garden centers. Great. Well, now listen, if you have a problem with moles, and you know, if you live in this area, you probably do, uh, this is a great way to get rid of them, and it really will save you a lot of heartache seeing those little mountains that pop up. It's always a pleasure, Don. Thank you so much. You bet. Happy trapping. <laughs>
So if you like to plant seeds, the best time to do that is in the new moon and when the moon is dark. And so planting your seeds like pea seeds will actually do better because the water will be starting to rise to help those seeds germinate. And the same is the exact opposite though in a full moon. That is when the water is receding more and so we plant perennials there because they already have a root system but we want to have strong roots. So they're going to get stronger reaching down to that moisture that is a little bit lower than it was before. So for more information on lunar gardening or moon gardening, please go to the Garden Time website. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery, where spring is our favorite time of year. It's the time to prepare your garden for planting. We invite you to get a jump on spring with our huge selection. Let Portland Nursery's staff of professionals help with groceries you can grow. We've got the seeds, veggie starts, and expertise to ensure your success. Visit PortlandNursery.com for a list of classes and special events. Portland Nursery, helping make your backyard your favorite destination at 50th and Stark and 90th and Division. Millions of tulip bulbs transform the Iverson Farm into one of Oregon's most stunning events. The family invites you to the Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival. Explore our tulip fields and market, kids' activities, food, and wooden shoe wine. The Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival open daily, now through April 29th. 1,112? 1,113. William, what? what are you counting? I'm counting all of our wonderful friends on Facebook. And we invite everyone to go to Facebook and like us and follow us. All you have to do is go to Gardentime.tv and hit the Facebook icon, which is in the top right hand corner. It's the best place to get the most updated information on Garden Time. So all you have to do is click us and like us. So who doesn't love to get fresh eggs from their backyard? And I'm here with Forrest at Coastal Farm and Ranch. And Forrest, I just want to give me like a, just a few points on when people come in. I would think that they would see chicks and go, oh, chicks, they're so cute. Let's get a they few. They do. And then they take them home. But there's some things you, you have to do. There, there's <laughs> a lot besides just picking the chicks out. You got to get a waterer. A lot of people forget they need that for some reason. Um, you got feed, that's important, medicated or non-medicated. When they're very young, we recommend the medicated. Um, of course, a feeder to go with the feed. Uh, when they're, also, when they're very young, it's a probiotic, a prebiotic, kind of like a Gatorade that we would drink, but for chickens. And you, you have that, that's what they're actually drinking mm -hmm. out of this yeah. container here. And then I would assume that maybe that would work for a while, but they grow. They do, <laughs> very fast. And I'm assuming that things like this, that's not where you're going to keep no, them outside. No. So do you have stuff here for that as well, yeah, or information we, about we it? Yeah, we do. We have chicken coops. You know, some people, it, you know, they uh, coop them or they free range them. It's just everybody Depending on how, exactly. how the backyard yep. is or how the place they want to graze them. And then I, I would think when I walked up in here before we got to this place, I saw this very large poster. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of different chickens. There, there are a lot of different chickens. <laughs> and so is there reasons why you would get one variety versus another? Some are better temperaments, some are better layers, uh, some are more hardy in the cold uh, climate. So yeah, there's just, a lot, I mean, honestly, when I was a kid, my grandmother had a lot of chickens, but you know what, she, she only got them for the different colored eggs. Mm -hmm. And that there's different the, colored eggs. Yeah. So there's a lot of different reasons why you really should talk to someone who knows what they're doing right. before you jump into exactly. this. Exactly. Yeah, it's not just, you know, like going to a dog store and getting your, <laughs> your puppy, you know, I mean, there's, you know, depend on where you live, what kind of eggs you want. And how many, I'm assuming. And how many, yeah. And when they're young, also, they need a heat lamp as well. All right, so from there, we know they're going to get bigger. They do. So where, where do we go from there with it? From there, like I said, you know, you turn them out and it's not just there. Sometimes the chicks like baby chi or the chickens, when they're like baby chicks, they'll have problems as well. Right. And we have, when those problems get here, we have everything to get you taken care of. So that's, that's and to me, I like that because even as they get older, they're still going to have different things that attack them mm -hmm. and come to them to, that you're going to have to deal with. Yes. You guys, they can come back here and say, what's this about? You'll be able to help them. Year round. 
Well, we're you know, always stocked up in supplies, and it, that's what I like too. Because when you have, when you come to a place like Coastal, first of all, it's big enough that you don't have to worry about them running out or not being there and the hours and stuff. So that's helpful. And if you really want to raise these four eggs, especially, you want to make sure you do it right and you raise healthy chickens throughout their life. So we invite you to go to GardenTime.tv and we'll kick you over to their website. They have 17 stores now, so they'll show you where all those are. They'll show the hours, phone numbers, addresses, and then you can go to Coastal and start a little chicken ranch all of your own. Thank you so much, appreciate thank, it. Thank you. Oh, and there is the last one, Judy. Great. <laughs> now you might think it's odd that we are putting out wasp traps at this time of year, but really this is the perfect time of year to do it because the queens are just now emerging to look for new places to nest. Right, so you want to clean all the um, traps that you've had out all year, and then you want to put in the new pheromones. Now this will attract only the stinging insects that bother us all summer long, like yellow jackets and wasps, and it won't hurt the beneficials like honeybees. And remember to make it even more effective, hang several of them around your garden. Putting out your wasp traps, that's our tip of the week. a beautiful home inside and out at French Prairie Perennials. Inside we have just the right creative elements to complete your decor. We offer an oasis of unusual nature inspired garden and home gifts and accessories. Outside choose from our wide selection of unique dwarf conifers and sparkling companion plants. French Prairie Perennials located between Woodburn and Wilsonville. Take exit 278 to Aurora and French Prairie Perennials. Come to the 17th annual Garden Palooza April 6th at Fur Point Farms. See over 40 plant growers and garden vendors. Free parking and free admission. Stop by and enter to win a garden arbor from Garden Gallery Ironworks. Garden Palooza April 6th at Fur Point Farms in Aurora. At Garland Nursery, you'll find top quality plants, four generations of garden know how, fun and fantastic garden decor and the best in garden supplies. Come visit us at Garland Nursery. Since 1937, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. Well, I'm standing here with Diana and we are at Terra Casa and Diana, one of the things I really love about this place, there's so many things to love, is that you have a great selection of fountains, but not only in form and style, but also in the material they're made in. Right, we have a lot of different kinds, and we have a really nice selection of concrete fountains, and we have classical styles, we have contemporary styles, in all shapes and sizes, little tiny ones that can go on your back patio, or really, really large ones for a corner piece in your yard. And then right behind this wonderful display is also, you guys do a lot with just pottery and turning those into founds, which are lovely. We take many of our pots that we um, have in the yard, which we have the largest, probably the largest selection of uh, ceramic pottery in the Portland area, and we can turn any of those into a fountain. And we have uh, guys here who can put these together and custom make them, and there's a few different styles you can go with. You can go with the kind where the water's on the outside or a self-contained where the water falls wow. back in on itself and there's a lot of different, so you choose your pot and we'll turn it into a fountain. And again, with the whole size thing, it can be smaller pots up to mm. these massive pots. Really large, yes, right. yes. But then there's also, for some people, you know, a lot of us have smaller yards now, and we would like just something a bit smaller, so let's walk over to another location and look at some of those choices. Okay. So now, Diana, we are in this area of, of the fountain area that is really beautiful because not only are they metal, but they're also lightweight and Tell me about them because they're lovely. Well, the nice thing about the metal fountains are they're, that's a much smaller footprint right. than, say, a pottery fountain or a, a concrete fountain. And they make a lot of sound yeah. as well because they're metal. But they're easy to move around. Um, they're easy to set up, take home and set up. And there's just there's the leaves and the watering buckets. And it's just there's a lot of fun ones. There's, you can put some on little plant stands out on your back patio with the crows. They're just, you can kind of put them anywhere. It's true, and I, and I love that. And then let's not forget that you also have fountains 
for inside the house, inside the store we here do. as well. We, so yeah. you really cover all the aspects <laughs> of fountains, don't exactly. you? Exactly. Tabletop fountains, a little ceramic ones inside. A couple of these could even go inside right, right. as long as you protect your wood or wherever you put it. But um, they're just they're just really fun. And they, then, you know, one of the things, Diana, that I really love about, about your store is that you guys actually have people on staff that can come out and set these up and then help you maintain them. So there's a lot going on there. We do. And one of the things with the larger fountains is people say, I, I want it, but I don't know how to take it home and set it up. Our guys not only build the fountains, but they will install, they'll they'll dig your hole for you. Nice. They'll, they'll um, get it all set up and evened out and uh, make sure that it is properly taken care of. Well, you know, I can't tell you how many times I must tell all of you that I love coming out here to Terra Casa. This is just another one of the many reasons why is because not only can you get your fountain, you can have it installed and learn how to take care of it. Diana, always a delight. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, William. Millions of tulip bulbs transform the Iverson Farm into one of Oregon's most stunning events. The family invites you to the Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival. Explore our tulip fields and market, kids' activities, food, and wooden shoe wine. The Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival open daily, now through April 29th. For 90 years, Espoma has one guiding principle. Develop the finest organic gardening products that work in harmony with nature, grow beautiful gardens, and make a greener world for the future. From our soil products to our plant foods, we have always been committed to the environment and sustainability. We use a vast array of natural and organic ingredients and package them in our 100% solar powered plant. Look for the quality line of Espoma products at your local independent garden center. Espoma, organic from the beginning. The health and beauty of your garden starts from the ground up and healthy soils begin at Grimm's Fuel. For the best in garden mulch, blended soils, and bark dust, choose Grimm's. U-Haul delivered or installed, Grimm's can do it. And if you're looking for a new lawn, Grimm's can do that too with our special lawn installation service. Grimm's is also the area's largest recycler of yard debris. The foundation for a healthy garden begins at Grimm's Fuel. Clement Gander started Standard TV and Appliance in Southeast Portland in 1947. With price cuts on dozens of top brands in every category, including Simmons mattresses, washers and dryers starting at $399, refrigerators as low as $229, dishwashers starting at $339, and a Simmons Beauty Sleep Queen mattress for only $199. Oregon based and family owned since 1947. Hurry, Founders Day and Sunday, Standard TV and Appliance. Hey everybody, I'm Brian Bauman from Bauman's Farm and Garden, and I wanted to welcome you to one of our new additions this year. Every year it seems like we've got new things going on at the farm, and this year we've taken a new space, filled it with some great home decor, and one of the hottest trends in plants today, houseplants. And of course, there is no houseplant that you see on the cover of more magazines than the fiddle leaf fig. This plant is awesome. I want one in my house. But in order to be successful, there's some things to remember. This plant loves to keep a nice level of moisture. Not too dry and not too wet. Also, it wants to have a lot of light, but not direct light. So in other words, keep it in a room where there is a window, but not right in front of the window. There are a few other plants that I think are a little bit easier to care for and that are kind of a spin on an old traditional. This right here is a spider plant. You've seen this a lot before, but this is a newer variety that has curled up leaves. This plant is super easy to care for, and it's one of our favorites. Also, another one of our favorites is this brand new Chinese money plant, or pancake plant. One of the coolest things about it is it puts off a whole bunch of babies that you can easily take off and share with your friends and family. And don't forget about the Pilea watermelon. This plant has little tiny leaves that look like little watermelons covering the plant. Another one that's pretty easy to care for and one of the hottest plants today. We also carry a whole line of containers, which makes it easy to pick up your plant and drop it in a pot that works great for your home decor. A lot of people often have questions about how to water. And here's one trick that we like to do at the farm. We like to use what we call drop-in pots, where you can buy your pot in small containers you can water them thoroughly, let the water drain all the way out the bottom, and then pick the right pot for your home decor and slide it back in, put a little bit of moss around the edges, and your plant's ready to go. 
For other tips like the ones we discussed today, head on over to our YouTube channel at Bauman's Farm and Garden. For today's kindergarten segment, we are going to make seed bombs. Now, seed bombs are really simple and they're a lot of fun to make. In fact, we have Dean here who's helping us. He's kind of okay. our boss today. And you start with just paper and ripping it into pieces. Now, really, you can use any kind of paper. We're using scratch paper, we're using colored paper, you can use magazines, really anything. Just remember, the thicker the paper, the longer it's going to take to break down. So once we get all the paper in little pieces, we're going to put it in this water, and then we're going to wait about an hour until it breaks down, and then we'll be right back. So it's been about 15 minutes that we had the paper soaking in the water and there, it's already starting to break down. So now we're going to put it in the Cuisinart and really get it mashed. So Dean, give me a hand here and we're going to put it in the Cuisinart. All right. And so we're going to, yeah, we're going to put it in there because we want it as small pieces as possible to make these seed bombs. Get all of them. All of this stuff. Yeah, thank you. There we go. Okay, William. All righty. It's up to you. Step away there. We'll plug this in now. The reason that we're putting it in a Cuisinart is because it makes sense that it's not completely soluble and crunchy yet. So we're going to completely char charge it up now and we're going to pulse this just oh. <laughs> a few times. I'm not sure why it's doing that, but it's clearly doing its job. It's getting small. It's it pulping is. it. Yeah. And then once it's that way, there you, go. you can go in, clean down the sides, get all of this down there. And then we're going to do it again. There you go. Ah, there you go. All right, that looks pretty much pureed. So the next thing we're going to do is start draining it out now. I'm going to punch it again. You, you yes, you are. Too. You get to punch the moisture out. And surprisingly, it doesn't look oh, like look there's all that. that much in there. It doesn't look like anything of little so that pieces looks like of paper. A slug now, look at that one. Yeah, it looks like. I don't know, guacamole. All right, guacamole. there you go. Guacamole. <laughs> Paper guacamole. There okay, you go. Okay, Dean, help me. We're going to push all that water. Oh! Out. There we go. Ow! It feels weird. It does feel weird. It's kind of fun. Oh! And we're going to squeeze do that too. all squeeze that water. It out works. Yeah. Like this? Yeah, yeah, there we go. You got a very strong little one. All right, we're squeezing out just the last of the water. Thank you, Dean. I think that's good. We're going to move that on the side. And so, Dean, give me a hand here. What we're going to do is start filling up these little discs here. This is kind of a silicone cookie disc. And you only want to fill it up halfway. We don't want to fill it up all the way to the top. So you can yeah. do that, okay? Now, you don't have to use anything as fancy as this. If you have like little mini muffin trays or even a cupcake tray, just remember not to do it so thick because you want the seeds to kind of burst out of the paper. And so we're going and to... And you can do any shape you want with You this. sure can. You can do any kind of shape. And like so while we're... Yes, you can. <laughs> <I suggest. laughs> so while they're doing that, we want to use these towels just to kind of push out any more moisture that are in these discs. And once we get that all filled and all of the moisture taken out as much as possible, we're going to let this rest overnight and dry overnight, and we're going to finish the project tomorrow. So now it's the next day, and our little seed bombs are almost ready, and they're, they're dry and ready for the next step. Now the next step is, of course, the wildflower seeds. Now, Dino, you're going to help me do this. All you do is take a little bit of a pinch and just kind of place it inside of each single little thing there for the seed to be in. And then I'm going to come right behind them. I'm going to add more of the paper mixture right on top. And I'm going to seal in the seeds to complete the seed bomb. And then after you fill it all the way to the top, and I take my little towel again, and I'm really going to squish it down to take out as much water as possible. Then we're going to let these dry for one or two days, and then they're ready. So now, after you let them dry, all you have to do is pop them out of the little tins that they're in or the, the silicone things, walk around your garden, just toss them carelessly all <laughs> over the place wherever you might want a little pop of color of wildflowers. Well, you know, we always love to be in our backyards and then also have wildlife in it. So I'm with Ryan Gilpin, and Ryan, I just listened to you do a wonderful seminar, seminar about having wildlife in our gardens and in our backyards. And so tell me, like, your background a little bit. 
so I work for a small consulting group in the San Francisco Bay Area, a division of the Bartlett Tree Expert Company. And we specialize in tree preservation and writing arborist reports and things like that. Um, but we also, I've, I've been more focused lately on wildlife and tree bird interactions in particular. Uh, so as a homeowner, you know, it's getting in that springtime and so we're going to be out in our gardens and we might be doing some pruning. So really there are some things that we should be watching for when we're pruning. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's important when we're working to be aware of wildlife and birds in particular, especially nesting wildlife, because at that point in their life cycle, when they're young, when they're eggs or chicks, they're very sensitive to impacts and they're, they're trapped in one location. They can't flee us when we approach them. And so this is a good time to, when we're out planning our tree work, planning things that we're going to be doing, to be aware of those nests, be looking for them, and try to avoid them and not, not impact them when we do find them. Right, and it, it won't be too late. Once they fledge, it won't be too late then to go in and go into that tree area and you won't be disturbing them because they're already gone. Yeah, so typically you can remove that tree or that branch that the nest is in once the young have left the nest. So that, that's, it depends on the species, but that can just be a couple of weeks. It might not be very long. Right, right. And then also while we're looking at our, our landscape, our trees, we're maybe seeing some dead branches or some rot going on. <laughs> like, and so we want to take it out, but you're saying maybe we want to preserve it. Yeah, in the urban forest, in our gardens, we've done a very good job of understanding the risks that some of these dead branches and dying trees uh, pertain to us. But they also have, we've done such a good job of getting rid of them that we maybe don't have enough in our gardens and in our urban forests. And so anything that we can do to preserve these dead and dying trees, because they're such an a, a important resource that's also been removed from our urban forests, um, I think is important. And, but it, it does have risk associated with it. So I think it's important to have, uh, we have a specific training in risk that many arborists have and that we can go through a process of determining how risky, how safe these trees are and when we can preserve more dead and dying trees in our gardens and urban forests that the, the wildlife are really going to benefit from that. So if we wanted to do that, it's, it's really um, possibly we need to call in an expert maybe to kind of see that because we want to be safe in our gardens but we want to have the wildlife protected too. Absolutely, I recommend using a certified arborist um, in any time that you're doing tree work. Uh, they can be better for for the tree, better for the wildlife, and better for, for you ultimately to do a, do a really great job. And also you're involved in an organization, it's Tree Care for Birds, and so that's a great website for information for us too. Yeah, currently the Tree Care for Birds website is really California-centric. We're working on expanding that out to more states to include Arizona, Nevada, and Hawaii. There's not any specific information about the Pacific Northwest right now, but there are bits and pieces of information in there that are definitely pertinent here. Ryan, maybe you can give us just maybe two tips that we can all use for our, um, this, t this time in the spring. Yeah, absolutely. I would just go out and observe the nature around us. It's both really great just to enjoy mm -hmm. the wildlife that we do have and to be aware of, hey, I might be having an impact. There may be some nesting wildlife here. And then if you can't preserve a dead or dying tree, if it's unsafe, uh, consider leaving some downwoody debris ar around your property, some large branches, big pieces of wood, where it's appropriate and where it makes sense. Uh, that will really be helpful for everybody. Thank mm. you. Well, if you have any other questions about this subject, you can always go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to the Bartlett Tree Experts website, or you can check out the Tree Care for Birds website. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for watching our first hour-long program of the season. And you know, although Brian did not talk about it, he has these mm. new begonia baskets for sale. Now I can tell you why they're so special. It's because they look and smell like roses and you can pick one up this weekend out at Bauman Farm. And if you have any questions about today's show or about next week's Garden Palooza, please go to gardentime.tv. Well, thanks for spending this first hour-long episode with us and we'll do it again next week right here on Garden Time. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.